Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for Friday, November 27th, 2020. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and unite our prayers together um, and during this week of Thanksgiving. Also have a prayer th- or a psalm of Thanksgiving, a presidential proclamation for Thanksgiving, as well as a Native American prayer. So let's gather together this morning. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our prayer of thanks, our psalm of thanksgiving is Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God, and a great ruler over all gods. In your hands are caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Our thanksgiving for baptism, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious God, we give you thanks that through the, through the gift of our baptism, you have embraced us as your own and made us one in Christ's body. By the power of your Holy Spirit, continue to nourish and strengthen us in the ways of faith, hope, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today are Daniel chapter 8 and 9, which is a vision of a ram and a goat. That's chapter 8. Um, so we are now switching over to the more sort of apocalyptic, strictly apocalyptic or prophetic works of Daniel. Um, so this will be set during that sort of overall time. We'll see that this is, this first one at least, is from the time of King Belshazzar. So that is the second king um, still within the Babylonian um, empire. So these are visions and, and uh, prophetic works of Daniel. Listen for God's word to speak to you. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me. Daniel, after the one that had appeared to me at first. In the vision, I was looking and saw myself in Susa, the capital, in the province of Elam, and I was by the river Ulai. I looked up and I saw a ram standing beside the river. It had two horns. Both horns were long, but one was longer than the other, and the longer one came up second. I saw the ram charging westwards and northwards and southwards, All beasts were powerless to withstand it, and no one could rescue from its power. It did as it pleased and became strong. As I was watching, a male goat appeared from the west, coming across the face of the whole earth without touching the ground. The goat had a horn between its eyes. It came towards the ram with the two horns that I had seen standing beside the river, and it ran at it with savage force. I saw it approaching the ram. It was enraged against it and struck the ram, breaking its two horns. The ram did not have power to withstand it. It threw the ram down to the ground and trampled upon it, and there was no one who could rescue the ram from its power. Then the male goat grew exceedingly great, but at the height of its power the great horn was broken, and in its place there came up four prominent horns towards the four winds of heaven. Out of one of them came in another horn, a little one, which grew exceedingly great towards the south, towards the east, and towards the beautiful land. It grew as high as the host of heaven. It threw down to the earth some of the host and some of the stars and trampled on them. Even against the prince of the host, it acted arrogantly. It took the regular burnt offering away from him and overthrew the place of his sanctuary. Because of wickedness, the host was given over to it together with a regular burnt offering. It cast truth to the ground and kept prospering in what it did. Then I heard a holy one speaking. And another holy one said to the one that spoke, For how long is this vision concerning the regular burnt offering, the transgression that makes desolate, and the giving over of the sanctuary 
and the host to be trampled. And he answered him, For two thousand three hundred evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary shall be restored to its rightful state. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I tried to understand it. Then someone appeared standing before me, having the appearance of a man, and I heard a human voice by the Uli calling, Gabriel, help this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I became frightened and fell prostrate. But he said to me, Understand, O mortal, that the vision is for a time, for the time of the end. As he was speaking to me, I fell into a trance, face to the ground. Then he touched me and set me on my feet. He said, Listen, and I will tell you what will take place later in the period of wrath, for it refers to the appointed time of the end. As for the ram that you saw with the two horns, these are the kings of Media and Persia. The male goat is the king of Greece. And the great horn between its eyes is the first king. As for the horn that was broken, its place, in place of which four others arose, four kingdoms shall arise from his nation, but not with his power. At the end of their rule, when the transgressions have reached their full measure, A king of bold countenance shall arise, skilled in intrigue. He shall grow strong in power, shall cause fearful destruction, and shall succeed in what he does. He shall destroy the powerful and the people of the holy ones by his cunning. He shall make deceit prosper in his hand, and in his own mind he shall be great. Without warning he shall destroy many, and shall even rise up against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken, and not by human hands. The vision of evenings and the mornings that has been is true, and as for you, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days from now. So I, Daniel, was overcome and lay sick for some days. Then I arose and went about the king's business, but I was dismayed by the vision and did not understand it. In the first year of Darius, son of Ahasuerus, by birth a Mede, who became king over the realm of the Chaldeans, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the number of years that, according to the word of the Lord, to the prophet Jeremiah, must be fulfilled for devastation of Jerusalem, namely, seventy years. Then I turned to the Lord God to seek an answer by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, Ah, Lord, great and awesome God, keeping covenant and steadfast love with those who love you and keeping your commandments. We have sinned and done wrong, acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to your kings, or our princes and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Righteousness is on your side, O Lord, but open shame, as at this day falls on us. The people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel, those who are near and those who are far away, in all the lands to which you have driven them, because of the treachery that they have committed against you. Open shame, O Lord, falls on us, our kings, our officials, and our ancestors, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him, and we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws, which he set before us by his servants and prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, refusing to obey your voice. So the curse and the oath written on the law of Moses, the servant of God, has been, have been poured out upon us because we have sinned against you. He has confirmed his words which he spoke against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us a calamity so great that what was, has been done against Jerusalem has never before been done under the whole heaven. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come upon us. We did not entreat the favor of the Lord our God, turning from our iniquities and reflecting on his fidelity. So the Lord kept watch over his, this calamity until he brought it upon us. Indeed, the Lord our God is right in all that he has done, for we have disobeyed his voice. 
And now, O Lord, our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made your name renowned even to this day, we have sinned. We have done wickedly. O Lord, in view of all your righteous acts, let your anger and wrath, we pray, turn away from your city, Jerusalem your holy mountain, because of our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors. Jerusalem and your people have become a disgrace among all our neighbors. Now therefore, O our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication, and for your own sake, Lord, let your face shine upon your desolated sanctuary. Incline your ear, O my God, and hear. Open your eyes and look at our desolation and the city that bears your name. We do not present our supplication before you on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies, O Lord. Hear, O Lord. Forgive, O Lord. Listen and act and do not delay for your own sake, O my God, because your city and your people bear your name. While I was speaking and was praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God on behalf of the holy mountain of my God, while I was speaking in prayer, the name Gabri- the man Gabriel, whom I had seen before in a vision, came to me in swift flight at the time of the evening sacrifice. He came and said to me, Daniel, I have now come out to give your wi- you wisdom and understanding. At the beginning of your supplications, a word went out, and I have come to declare it. For you are greatly beloved, so consider the word and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin and to atone for iniquity, to bring an everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and prophet, and to anoint a most holy place. Know therefore and understand from the time that the word went out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the time of the anointed prince, there shall be seven weeks. And for sixty-two weeks it shall be built again, the streets and moat. But in a troubled time after the sixty-two weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. And the troops of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. He shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half of the week he shall make sacrifice and offering cease. And in their place shall be an abomination that desolates, until the decreed end poured out upon the desolator. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, so now we're getting into much more sort of like uh, not as straightforward as we can tell. So first of all, we have this vision during the time of uh, Belshazzar. And this is a vision of this this great ram with these two horns who goes, um, you know, kind of to and fro and and, and takes over all this stuff. And then there's a um, goat with this one horn and it comes at it and it just takes it out, right? Um, And... Right, so that's so we have this. What's really going on here, he's saying, is that there is this uh, great empire, these sort of two empires, these two horns of the same thing, the uh, the Babylonian Empire and the Median or the Persian Empire. Um, as we might remember, the Belshazzar is actually the last king of Babylon, and when he dies, another, the, the Persian king takes over and there's the Persian empire. So these are two are kind of connected. They're this great ram who goes north and south and east and west and just takes over, right? It's this huge empire. And yet it will be taken over by this other, this, this goat that seems to not even touch the ground. Um, and many suggest that this is in fact Alexander the Great. Alexander comes through and just wipes out the, um, the Persian empire and just takes it over, just takes over not only it, but everything else. Um, And yet when that horn, Alexander, is broken, that the rest of that sort of um, Seleucid empire, it was actually broken under four generals because it could not all be uh, looked over by itself. And um, so there's these four horns that aren't as strong as the other. So that's kind of a little bit of what's going on here, this sort of uh, vision of what is to come. 
And then Daniel, in, during the time of Darius, this is now the next king, the Persian king, um, really looks at his own people. And this is kind of the thing that we've been waiting for, right? He looks at what has happened to his own people, how they have brought, been brought out of exile. He's reading over the, the law of Moses. He's reading, and he says specifically that he's, he's read these things in Jeremiah the prophet. And he realizes just how badly his own people have done, right? And so we have this long extended period of, of um, confession, of sorrow over all that they have done, all the ways that they have not lived up to the high calling that they have been given by the living God. Um, he is recognizes very clearly that all the things that have happened to them, their destruction, the, their loss of national identity, their exile, all of this is a result of their own actions, of their own inability to, to live up to the things that God had called them to. And so it's this time of confession. It's this time of acknowledgement um, and prayers that God would yet still give mercy and grace that Jerusalem would not completely be destroyed, that, that all of these things would, um, would be good, you know, right? Um, and, and, and he's looking towards the end of this time. Well, then we have Gabriel, and we had Gabriel in the, in the previous vision as well. This is the first sort of angel that is named, and we recognize him from the, the Gospel of Luke as well. Um, but Gabriel tells him, you know, there's, there's things yet to come. There's, the timing is a little bit off, and we'll, we'll eventually see this a little bit more in the next chapter, that because the people of, of Abraham, right, the, the Jewish people, have not actually repented in the way even that Daniel is right now, but because they have not turned from their wicked ways, that this potentially could have been a 70-year period is actually going to be even longer than that. He promises the destruction of the temple and, and a taking away of the sacrifice. This, this, um, um, this one who will come into the temple and is the, uh, what is the, the phrase, the, um, the abomination that makes desecration. Uh, this, many suggest, is, I believe it's Cyrus, um, one of the... Um, one of these sort of kings, the Seleucid kings, who comes in and, and defiles the temple and stops everything. Though also some suggest that this is the destruction of the temple in 70 AD in Jerusalem. Um, and yet some also suggest that this is a something that will further be, um, has not, we have not seen, that the, the temple will actually be re- built in Jerusalem, and then there will be some sort of antichrist uh, desolate, uh, abomination that will come in and desecrate the temple. Um, all of these things he is seeing, uh, but I think the most important part of this section, I think, is Daniel's um, acknowledgement of his own participation in sin, um, his own confession, knowing that he is a part of all of this. Um, for, for us, he is a great sort of role model for this, that part of what we are called to do is, is to look at ourselves with humility, um, not only in our own lives, but also the, um, the institutions, the families, the cultures, the nations that we participate in and are a part of, and really acknowledge that we collectively have fallen from God's grace. We don't do the things that we are supposed to be doing. And so this moment of, of confession is important. Um, and yet, even though he confesses, it's not, it's not like the whole nation is now off the hook. Um, he's just the one who understands what is going on. Um, he's not turning about what, what is going to happen. So those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning we will live this day in joy and praise. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of discernment and governance. Those who teach and those who learn.
the community of faith in your church? Reconciliation in our relationships. All gifts of healing and forgiveness. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for our stewardship campaign. That Bill has had uh, several good reports from doctors. We thank God for time, for uh, reflection, for thanksgiving, for time connecting with family and friends, either in person in small groups or reaching out through all sorts of digital means for the many blessings of that technology. Merciful God, strengthen us in our prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially, we pray for the church in Europe. Safe, clean, and renewable energy. Those who are lonely and forgotten. Those, who, uh, those from whom we are estranged. All who glorify you in worship and service. People of God, for what else do we pray? We lift up Debbie, who fell and split her hand. For David and Emily's son. For Teddy, a friend of Bill's who is undergoing cardiac bypass surgery in December. For Anne's daughter who has been in the hospital um, after a heart procedure. For James who is having bypass surgery in December. For Julie, John, and Linda's daughter who's in the hospital after a surgery removing a mass from her stomach. For Sophia, who is um, recovering from COVID-19, as well as Tony, Lori, and Portia. All those who are traveling or receiving visitors during the Thanksgiving holiday. For those who did neither, or who had smaller gatherings. We pray that all might be safe and find special meaning and thankfulness for this season. We pray for all those affected or suffering from COVID-19, for those recovering, for all the doctors and nurses, for the medical professionals, for the blessing of now three viable uh, vaccinations, for the continued work to eradicate this, um, this disease and to get back to normal. Eternal God, you are the source of every gift and the fountain of all blessing. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our presidential Thanksgiving um, proclamation today comes from 2010 and Barack Obama. A proclamation by the President of the United States of America. A beloved American tradition, Thanksgiving Day offers us the opportunity to focus our thoughts on the grace that has been extended to our people and our country. This spirit brought together the newly arrived pilgrims and the Wampanoag tribe 
who had been living and thriving around Plymouth, Massachusetts, for thousands of years in an autumn harvest feast centuries ago. This Thanksgiving Day, we reflect on the compassion and contributions of Native Americans, whose skill and agriculture helped the early colonialist, uh, colonists survive, and whose rich culture continues to add to our nation's heritage. We also pause our normal pursuits on this day and joy in a special fellowship and gratitude for the year's bounties and blessings. Thanksgiving Day is a time each year dating back to our founding when we lay aside the troubles and disagreements of the day and bow our heads in humble recognition of the providence bestowed upon our nation. Amidst the uncertainty of a fledgling experiment in democracy, President George Washington declared the first Thanksgiving in America, recounting the blessings of tranquility, union, and plenty that shined upon our young country. In the dark days of the Civil War, when the fate of our Union was in doubt, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a Thanksgiving Day, calling for the Almighty Hand to heal and restore our nation. In confronting the challenges of our day, we must draw strength from the resolve of previous generations who faced their own struggles and take comfort in knowing a brighter day has always dawned in our great land. As we stand at the close of one year and look to the promise of the next, we lift up our hearts in gratitude to God for our many blessings, for one another, and for our nation. This Thanksgiving Day, we remember that the freedoms and security we enjoy as Americans are protected by the brave men and women of the United States Armed Forces. These patriots are willing to lay down their lives in our defense and they and their families deserve our profound gratitude for their service and sacrifice. This harvest season, we are also reminded of those experiencing the pangs of hunger or the hardship of economic insecurity. Let us return the kindness and generosity we have seen through the, throughout the year by helping our fellow citizens weather the storms of our day. As Americans gather for the time-honored Thanksgiving Day meal, let us rejoice in the abundance that graces our tables in the simple gifts that mark our days, in the loved ones who enrich our lives, and the gifts of a gracious God. Let us recall that our forebears met their challenges with hope, and in unfailing spirit, let us resolve to do the same. Now, therefore, I, Barack Obama, President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim Thursday, November 25, 2010, as a national day of thanksgiving. I encourage all the people of the United States to, to, to come together, whether in our homes, places of worship, community centers, or any places place of fellowship for friends and neighbors, to give thanks for all we have received in the past year, to express appreciation to those whose lives enrich our own, and to share our bounty with others. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hands this 23rd day of November, in the year of our Lord 2010, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 235th. Barack Obama. In addition, we have a wonderful three-step prayer. This is written um, by Josie Hobday. Uh, Josie Hobday was a, um, a spiritual writer who not only grew up in the Native American tradition, but also in the Catholic tradition, and so um, wrote a lot of sort of blending of the two. So that's, that's why I chose uh, the prayer for today and tomorrow from from her work. A three-step prayer. First step, plant your feet firmly on the earth. Using your five senses, give thanks to our Creator God for the countless ways God comes to us through creation. For all the beauty that your eyes see. For all the sounds that your ears hear. for all the scents that you smell, the tastes that you taste, and for all that you feel, the sun, wind, 
rain, snow, warm, or cold. Pray this day that you may be open and attuned to the countless ways that our Creator God comes to us, through your senses, through the gifts of creation. Second step. Let go of all the pain, struggle, regret, failures, garbage of yesterday. Step out of it. Leave it behind. Brush the dust of it from your feet. Third step. With this third and final step, step into the gift of the new day, full of hope, promise, and potential. Give thanks for the gift of this new day, which God has made. Amen. Now, so far as it depends on us, let us live peaceably with all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, and go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. For more information, go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. Our readings came from the book uh, from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Um, the Presidential proclamation came from the Pilgrim Hall Museum, and the um, the prayer came from Josie Hobday and came from Xavier University. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a very blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.